I'm a social historian and I'm a crime historian. Uh, and so this book really forced me into a new discipline and that was to kind of wrestle with women's history and understand discrimination, gender studies, uh, gender roles and expectations. In doing so, I realized that all the kind of studies that had been done about gender roles and, and gender expectations and stereotypes also applied to crime and that um, it hadn't been really done in many, in many ways. And so I took really kind of the models of other historians um, and applied them to, to crime. And, and the, the short answer is um, women are expected to be pious, pure, domestic, and maternal. And when they're not, uh, and they commit an act that seems to violate that social norm, we get excited about it. I focus only on Pennsylvania women who kill. When you start kind of parsing it out into other states and other communities, you have to examine a, a whole host of different factors, race, ethnicity, um, geography, economics, um, all different types of things, and, and the, the different nature of law and law enforcement in those other states and communities. So I think by focusing on Pennsylvania, I've been allowed to, to kind of see a consistent pattern of uh, how women commit particular crimes um, and how the society responds to them. The book deals with 18th century crimes, a, a lot of 19th century crimes, and mostly early 20th century crimes. But I do go up to, to contemporary period. There's so few women who kill compared to the numbers of men, um, it's, it's insignificant. But yet we're captured by it, we're titillated by it. We, we want to know, how, you know what happened, what drove a mother to kill their child. Okay? So the fact that the Casey Anthony case um, captured our attention nationwide tells us something less about Casey Anthony as it does about ourselves. And that is, this woman broke a social norm. Um, she didn't just break the law, she broke a social norm and seemed to violate a social norm um, in this case. And that's true, of, that's true of women all across the board. Anytime a woman kills, it is shocking to us because we have very kind of standard stereotypes of what a woman is supposed to be. You know, in the 19th century, it was woman was supposed to be quiet, demure, um, pious, pure, domestic, and maternal, kind of a, a fragile vessel. Um, and so when a woman kills, um, that violates that social norm in a significant way, and we're shocked by it. And that shock captures our attention, but we're also curious what what went wrong with this woman? What kind of circumstances compelled a woman to do that? And so um, I think the, the, my book works less on why women kill and, and tries to understand that. That's all very good. But to, to kind of focus on the fact that we are curious about it, and that tells us more about us and society and our gender stereotypes and gender expectations than it does about the women themselves. I actually have broken down the, the chapters into kind of stereotypes, the, the stereotypes of women um, who have committed these crimes, from, from the seductress to the blonde bombshell to the witch. Um, there was, you know, accusations of witchcraft. We have kind of the evil stepmother. I pay particular attention to Edna Mumbolo, who in 1930 set fire to her stepdaughter in Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, What's curious about that particular case is that she was a woman who saw her, her, this little girl go up in flames, and the media coverage at the time, you know, described it as, you know, the grieving mother having witnessed the death of her daughter. When the media found out, though, that she was the stepmother, then they began to cast her as the evil stepmother, the torch killer of 1930, and began to then cast doubt on, on the woman's innocence. Now, I think Edna Mumbolo is clearly guilty, but the fact that we were able to look at her as a grieving mother and then, then twist it to an evil stepmother so quickly without all the evidence being heard tells us again about our, our stereotypes in American society. One of the cases that um, I covered is the story of Irene Schroeder. And Irene Schroeder was a, was a woman, she was working as a waitress in West Virginia, um, led uh, basically kind of an average common life, um, but she fell in love with a, a married man by the name of Walter Glenn Daig. And together, um, for whatever reason, perhaps because of the, the Great Depression, she uh, 
and Walter Glenn Daig went on a series of, of robberies in West Virginia, Ohio, and Southwest Pennsylvania. Um, and it was in Southwest Pennsylvania, near Butler, Pennsylvania, that in the course of one of their robberies, um, she murdered a Pennsylvania State Trooper, shot him, uh, shot him dead right there on the road. Walter Glenn Daig, um, Irene Schroeder, and her son, Donnie, then fled. The, this was a woman who's caring for her child in the course of robberies and now having just murdered um, a state trooper. She fled back to her, to her parents' home um, and unfortunately in the course of, of their flight, little Donnie, who was three years old I think, um, testified that he had, you know, he, he basically spilled the beans on, on his mother unwittingly um, and the hunt was on. Irene Schroeder and Walter Glendig then fled out of uh, Pennsylvania and West Virginia uh, and made a beeline to the southwest. Um, near St. Louis, Missouri, they got in another gunfight and, and shot another police officer. And they weren't uh, ultimately captured until they were in Arizona. Um, and so they, they were caught there and, and brought back. And Irene Schroeder was, was tried, convicted, and was um, sentenced to, to die for her involvement um, in these robberies and in the murder of the, the Pennsylvania State Trooper. She is the first woman to be executed in, in Pennsylvania uh, history. Her story is important, I think, in, at least from my perspective in this book, is that she was consistently portrayed not according to her feats and her, her, um, her skill and her smarts, but she was always consistently um, described as the blonde bombshell, this, this beautiful uh, bad woman. Um, she was portrayed by her looks. Men killers, male killers, are n never portrayed according to their looks. Okay? It's, it's women are portrayed as she's this gorgeous killer. She's, you know, this beautiful woman who has, you know, an, uh, an iron heart. So they referred to her as, as Iron Irene. Um, this cold-hearted, beautiful woman who, you know, could kill at the drop of a hat. Well, that's, that's not who Irene Schroeder was. She was caught in the moment. She was not a cold-hearted murderer. She committed the crime, but she's a human being, and um, I'm, I, I would venture to, to say she probably felt bad about what she did. Um, but she was also scared and, and panicked, and so she did what she did. But the fact that she's portrayed according to her, her gender and her looks, and she's more description is given about her dress and her clothing than about anything else tells us about what society perceives these women at the time. I don't think the media has changed how we perceive um, women who kill. I think we're still curious. We're still titillated by it. You know, whether it be Casey Anthony or Susan Smith or you know whoever. Um, we, we are always asking the question, how can a mother kill? How can women kill? Um, because I think we still have those same stereotypes that, that women are s somehow different. Um, and, and maybe because of the statistics, women are different. Women don't kill as much. And maybe we ought to be curious and titillated by that. But um, the fact is women do kill. Um, and I'm not sure women kill for any different reason than anybody else does. It's, it's anger, frustration, revenge, desperation, abuse. Um, and so those kind of things compel women to do it. The media coverage, though, is, it has always been the same. It's, um, the difference is in the print, from print to, to video, and the difference is also in terms of the, the extent of the coverage. We now hear about murders in Florida in Arizona and elsewhere. Whereas, you know, in the 1930s, we would have only known about the, the particular small town cases in our own particular small towns. So it, it may seem like it's a, a greater epidemic. It may seem like we've seen a, a, a huge increase in the number of women who kill. I, I think that's by and large a product of perception because of media coverage. We're, we are watching um, everyone everywhere through the media. If you read the book, you'll, you'll get both a, a smattering of gender studies and kind of the academic analysis of, of how stereotypes affect what we do. But you'll also get these strong narratives of the, the particular cases and, and what happened.
from the, the background of the woman through the, the actual murder, uh, investigation and trial, and it, uh, it punctuates it nicely. But it's, um, I think what you'll come away with is really a, a complex and nuanced understanding of, of why women kill, and that um, it's part of us. Um, we, we put that value on it.